Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. Twenty-five years ago, this was the potential. It was not prophecy. When I said there would be no Armageddon, there would be no World War III in the time frame that you were told. It was not prophecy. For the entire reason for my being and the awakening of my partner to channel me was because of what you had done. And it falls in the lap of the old soul. The consciousness of timing. All that has transpired in these years has been potential. That is to say, we come and we look at how you are thinking and the potentials of what you might do based on that. And every prophecy that I have given to you is based on that. Even some of the most obscure ones we have given you. When we told you there would be a new pope and there was 13 months later, it was not prophecy. He was potential. We saw it coming because we have the overview and we knew of the anxiety of the man, the health of the man, and we also knew of the potentials of a South American pope. All of these things should be connect the dots for you. I come yet again, not with prophecy, but with information. And it comes with a congratulatory attitude. 25 years ago, I would like to have had this channel given, but you weren't ready. Now you sit in the energy we had discussed for more than 20 years. Can you imagine if you could put and superimpose upon the creative source the attributes of delight and adulation? Maybe you can use the word proud. Dear human being, this is not your father's new age. And that is the title. If you need to title, and you do, <laughs> and you need to categorize, and you do, that is the subject. And the reason this is so critical is because in an assemblage like this and the ones who are listening and reading, you have what we will call warriors of light. And that describes a human being who has done this, and this meaning esoteric belief, for dozens of years. That you awaken to the belief, some of you, when you were born. Others of you a bit later. But you participated in an older energy. You fought the battle as a light worker in an older energy. And you got used to the way things work in an older energy. And because the planet has not changed all that much, you might have been involved in the same kind of thing the life before this one. Maybe even before this one. And therefore, etched upon you are what we will call the spiritual rules of existence. And now they're different. So this is for light workers and old souls. Attributes we have talked about in pieces and parts in the past. And now instead we bring you some positive things that you can do and some what we will call admonitions of how to change. 
We started last week in that city you call Austin on a Sunday night. We started. So let us begin there. Dear ones, this is new, new energy. <laughs> a phrase you have heard perhaps for years, the new age is upon you. The new energy is arriving. Dear ones, it has arrived. And it's starting to plant its seeds. Those shamanic energies in the old soul are going to find some of these things difficult sometimes controversial because of only one thing that is the habits that you have had in the past which you found to be correct and proper for you so let us begin where we left off in review number one we said that your light quotient that is to say the amount of light that you carry which is a metaphor for your awareness and literally the physics of your consciousness is a higher and lighter energy than it ever was before this is possible because of the change in the magnetic grid because of other things that we have accomplished and the Pleiadians have accomplished for you. New tools are upon you and new ways are waiting to be discovered. And if you go into these ways with an old energy procedure, you're going to be disappointed. We started with this one. You carry so much light you can stop dealing with negativity with those which you will call dark energies in the room let me remind you of one of the things that so many of you would do prior to a meeting prior to a meditation you would change the energy and posture it for spiritual thought you would smudge it you would pray over it you would meditate and then in the room if you found a negative person or anything that you thought would interrupt the flow of the purity of love you might even stop and work with that one silently you would have your own way of creating the light you needed and erasing the negativity and now we are saying stop it why can't you feel why? Because you are carrying so much light that your presence in the room will not allow darkness. The reason you clear negativity is so it will not disturb the area. Think about it. If your light is so great, it's not going to get anywhere the negativity at all your light is so great it will permeate everything now this is new but you have to hear it in context with the actions of a new age esoteric person some of you will love to do ceremony which looks like clearing go ahead but it's not necessary to clear now this is controversial because you will say look at what might have happened in a space like this look at all of those people who might have been negative in a place like this think of the meetings that been held in a place like this we must clear it and we say oh no you don't if a master walked into this room would you clear the room and the answer is no the master clears it you understand this is the lineage that is yours claim it go for it you don't have to clear it and that is what we said on a Sunday one week ago in Austin now in the same way number two is going to be for the healer and there are many listening to my voice in the room reading later 
Healer, what is the process you are used to? If you are clearing before, you don't have to. Get used to it. Your presence next to the healee, the one on the table or the chair, is enough to chase away, cover completely all negativity. Now, the one in the chair may have fear. It doesn't affect you. You don't have to put together armor of any kind that is esoteric to shield you from your one on the table or in the chair. This is new. You carry a countenance that is so grand and so beautiful and so pure that nothing is going to get through. I just wanted you to know. Now, the one on the table can create their own negativity, their own unbelief, their own fear. That's not going to change. But how they affect you already has. You walk up and begin. Now, here is something we have not said before. There is an evolutionary process that is going on with human consciousness that literally affects many human beings in ways they are not aware of. We have spoken of the innate before, which is the spiritual smart body. That's the part of the body you muscle test to get in touch with. Now that is beginning to change. Now listen. If the human being, through free choice, has not decided to build the bridge to innate and knows nothing about it, that is their issue. But innate is changing in all humans. All humans. And that is to say spiritual awareness, if you want it, will become a higher vibration instantly, if you want it. Humans may go all their lives without ever saying hello to the innate. And they will simply be whoever they are. This is their free choice. But should they look and try to build the bridge to innate, it will be higher than the time you did. Now let me tell you what this is creating. Dear human healer, you stand or sit, you get in front of the one in front of you who you've come to give a session for in any process at all, any process. And they may be the highest unbeliever, but their innate is active. And when you get in touch with their innate, which is your gift, healer, you are going to start seeing almost instantly what they need. What process have you used so far? You might say, well, intuition, I listen to them. I listen to what they say, what their body tells me. I want to give you information that you don't really understand. The innate is going to yell at you immediately. But there is one proviso. <laughs> I want you to have the person on your table or chair shut their eyes for a moment and answer one question. And you are going to ask a question that you want a verbal answer for. Some of you already know the question. You're going to ask this. Do you give permission for the healing? And they must answer verbally. A nod is not good enough. And if they answer with pure intent, which you can ask for, the innate has permission to talk to you. This is where profound healing is going to start to occur. More than you have ever seen before. More. You will be astonished at how right I am <laughs> about your ability, dear human being, to shine light so that negativity does not occur, not in your session, not in your session. Get rid of the idea you have to protect yourself. Not anymore. Your light is pushing out to such a degree it won't be necessary. That's for the healers, all of you. Anyone who's doing any healing work 
at all is going to have this happen. Remember the question. Number three, there'll never be a time in human history that is more profound than this one when it comes to how the body is listening to what you want. There is a process and always has been where the cells of the body are on alert to what the boss wants. And you are the boss. And for years we've been asking you to talk to your body. Talk to your cellular structure. Now we're going to tell you. It's listening even when you don't remember to talk. So what are you saying? There's never been a time where negative dialogue will have more personal negative influence than now. Think of what you're saying. What is your attitude when you say it? How often do you say it? Because your body is listening. Dear light worker, it's just in reverse of what we've been telling you how the body is listening to that which you're giving it as far as positive instructions it is now listening to everything now you may say well that's nice no it's more than nice it's profound and it'll keep you aging if you don't pay attention this is why we are spoken of affirmations more than positive thinking instructions to your body and it listens to you when you talk to it I want you to think about what you're saying when somebody asks you about your health about your spirituality about your intent do you say the words I am working on it I am trying guess what <laughs> The cells on your body say, well, they're working on it and they're trying, but they don't have it. I want you to listen to yourself when you talk. Perhaps I've said enough, but almost every single one of you comes from a culture that is proud of demeaning yourself in some way. How many of you secretly say to yourself, I don't deserve it? Your actions will say, I don't deserve it. Your actions will say, I am unworthy. And you don't think your body hears this or sees it? It does. It is time to get out of the unworthy closet, light worker. Not only worthy, but alive with God inside. And don't be afraid or ashamed to say the words, I am he healthy, I am healed, I am youthing, I am in charge of the situation. Not I'm working on it, not I'm trying, not it'll happen someday. That's the difference. I am worthy of happiness I am worthy of a peaceful situation in my life I am worthy of a solution in my life that was number three number four is about meditation it's changing and here is how it's changing. There will start to become younger specialists. <laughs> it's going to start departing from all esoteric people should meditate to a split. There's going to be shamanic warriors who are meditation specialists who will guide the rest of you while you don't meditate. <laughs> Dear ones, with this kind of light and with your schedules, just being in spirit every single day is a meditation. 
It's hard for you to measure this. Not all of you are supposed to do the same thing. Is this a shock? The belief system that you have is not one thing for everyone. It is not generic. You are becoming specialists because of your Akash. Who you are, where you came from, what you did. Will guide what you do in this life to a greater degree than ever before. Watch for this. Young people who have decided to be the ones who go to India, the ones who decide how to meditate, what is best, and will do it for hours, and it may not be your forte. They're carrying the meditative load for you. It is new on the planet, and it's especially new when the young people will feel it first and they will not even agree among themselves one will do it differently than another they're meditation warriors big M on their chest <laughs> and some of you will see it and you'll shake your heads and you'll say well that isn't for me and spirit will be on your shoulder and saying thank you for seeing this old wise person <laughs> It's for them. What you have for you is compassionate living, walking day by day in difficult situations and creating a passionate countenance with compassion, with lack of anger. All the things we have talked about, the work that you're doing will be different from theirs. Now we're getting to specialization. Don't be surprised when it's not the same for everyone. That was number four. Dear ones, some of you are shaking your heads and saying, well, does that mean we're not supposed to meditate? How linear can you get? <laughs> I want you to be comfortable. I want you to understand this. Human beings want higher authority to tell them what to do and how to do it. That is starting to change. Can't you feel it? Getting out of the mold of authority. The greatest authority is the creative seed in you. Your intuition is going to give you the answer and it's going to play into the next one, number five. Your intuition will tell you how long to meditate, if at all, and what to do when you do it. And you don't have to turn to somebody and say, is this okay? Those days are over. Dear ones, yes, there will be leaders in the esoteric community. Let them lead with their love and their compassion, not with their information of how you're supposed to do something. Let them lead with examples of what is happening on the planet to help you understand how empowered you are. Not to tell you what to do and how to do it. Or a doctrine that you should believe in. Let that come from the creative source inside you. And you'll be right. You'll be right. And that leads us to number five. Now if you want to look at the numerology, number five would be change. I want you to acknowledge, be comfortable with, and accept change that is chemical in your body. I want you to acknowledge, honor, and accept change which is psychological in your body. Your Akash is going to start delivering to you some very different and wise information. As your vibration starts to increase, you're going to find who you thought you were may change. Habits, good and bad, will drop away. Good and bad. And in the process, the human being will go into fear. Isn't that interesting? Every single time there's a shift in what you're used to, you get afraid. This is a change in perception. I would like you to start 
welcoming the change in your life and see it in a positive way to realign you to the energy so you can survive and stay alive. You're going to get new habits, good and bad. <laughs> and they're going to come right out of your akash. And you're going to say, now where did that come from? And you're going to have to work with them. You're going to love the good ones. Now the good ones will actually sometimes come in a way that is what you're going to want to eat. A change in diet that may shock and surprise you and you'll lose weight or gain weight. Whatever you've asked for which is most healthy for your body. The Akash is starting to align itself with how many lifetimes have you been in the culture that ate a certain way. That's what your chemistry wants now. How about that? Instead of fast food. How about that? And how many of you are going to go with it or go into fear with it? What I want you to do is relax and let spirit start to build in you the new human. You know what we have called this? A process nobody expected. Ascension while alive. This is you passing into the next energy while you're alive. And that took reincarnation before. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You had to die, come back, realign in order to do what now we are saying you can do while you sit there if you won't be afraid of it. Your innate has got to be reprogrammed. We told you this before. And you're doing it through affirmations. You're doing it through positive thoughts and by the actions you have. Innate is used to an old idea that reincarnation is the engine for enlightenment. You've got to die and come back to have the new energy and now you don't. This is new. We gave you a channeling before that talked about it. This is new. I want you to think of it this way. Don't raise your hand, but how many of you really have felt you've been in trouble in the last couple of years? <laughs> I want you now to have the fortitude to celebrate the problems. You've just been realigned, dear human being. Maybe you've been realigned in a way that you're picking up that from the past that's going to make you healthier and live longer. What if you spent hundreds of years in a culture and only a few here? Don't you think your cellular structure wants the old ways more? The old foods more? And if you say yes, you're going to see chemical changes in your body. Changes that no medicine would be able to do. It has to do with basic health. What's in your blood? Have you had a blood test lately? <laughs> You're going to find even that may have changed. Oh, your type didn't. But the balance did because of what you're eating. Now here's the, these things I want to tell you are not subtle. And some of you are feeling them and you're worried about them. What have I told you about fear? It stops light. Do you want to stop this process or would you like to let it go? And the answer, dear ones, is stop fearing the light that is you. Understand an energy which you didn't expect is here. That's five. If you've noticed, when we give you a list of things, there's often six of them. There will be tonight. If you've noticed, there is a numerological significance to each number we give you, there is tonight. If you've noticed, there's a profundity to the list, simple to complex. The last one, number six. 
Six is a divine number. It refers to the higher self and many other things which speaks of a spiritual system of appropriateness. Six, the time capsules of this planet are opening and starting to deliver to you a lot. And if you ask, what are they? The answer is yes. Dear ones, the wisdom of the ancients told you that you cannot define the master number 44 and beyond because you do not have the consciousness yet to understand what they are. You don't know what you don't know. If you can understand that and understand that there are things yet to be aware of, to acknowledge, to to be part of that are not yet knowable, then you're going to be fine with this one. The time capsules open and they pour into the grid of the planet, the magnetic grid of the planet, the crystalline grid and the Gaia grid. They pour new energy of life. This is picked up first by the old soul. And the things that I have covered, one through five, are facilitated by that. They are catalytic energies that you don't know about yet that will eventually be responsible for an evolved thought. And when you know and have the evolved thought, you will have names for them. They have to do with common sense and wisdom, but more than that, a spiritual knowing. Eventually that humanity will have, which they will not call spiritual. They will call it human nature. <laughs> the propensity for maturity and peace on earth. The propensity for health and long lives not a spiritual existence. This comes later with awareness of what you have. I told you this would be difficult. An energy that goes around the planet that literally eventually becomes how you think and changes what you want to a lighter, higher vibrating soul and nothing to do with spirituality. <laughs> so here sits the atheist and the agnostic who knows about longer life, who knows about peace on earth because it's intuitive, inbred, the way it is, human nature. And they never knew where it came from. You will look back on history and you will say, we had the barbaric age till 2012. In a hundred years you'll look back and see humans are growing up. What they think and what they want and what they do. Far, far different than now. But you and I will know the reason. The time capsules are opening. And they pour to you this energy of a catalytic realignment of consciousness from your seed parents, the Pleiadians, who have love for you beyond measure like a parent would have for a child, but different. The pride they have of passing the marker, watching you go through the gyrations of dark and light that they did. Watching how you deal with that which is still dark on your planet and how much your heart hurts at what you see and the death that is there. But the knowingness that all things recycle and the appropriateness of lessons learned will give you a greater wisdom all pouring into the grids right now. 
it's hard to talk about because you don't know what you don't know. They have seen it and they know where it is going and they're breathless watching you. Open the door. This is going to take a while. <laughs> but you had to open the door. And as the door becomes opening more, you're going to have a revelation of what it's all about. You wonder why I am crying in love with humanity? I just told you. Because I've seen it before. So many of the groups have. Orion of Taurus, beyond, even beyond. Other names that you've heard before, all been through it, all watching you now, all celebrating your life right now. Part of you will understand and believe and know I'm right, and others will walk out of the doors just with the information barely there. That's free choice, and it's honored. It's honored so much in all of you. There is no judgment. If you walk away and you think this was a nice meeting and nothing more, you have the same number of angelic beings walking out the door with you in love with you that the healer for centuries does, that the shaman does. And that, my friend, means you're created equal. <laughs> All of you have the same spiritual potential God inside. That is the message for the day. Oh, human being, it's not your father's new age. It's your new age. And so it is. <laughs>